This episode of Talk About Games is sponsored by Full Sail University. Get into the gaming industry with programs in game development and game art. Learn industry standards and work with professional development tools. Graduates have gone on to work on titles such as Destiny, the Call of Duty series, and Far Cry 4. Go to fullsail.edu slash cinemassacre to get started. What's up, guys? It's another Talk About Games, and we have today the NES Mini. So we got a hold of this from our good friend Frank at Classic Game Junkie. Thank you very much. In Glenside, PA. He ordered 90 of these little things. Yeah. Guess how many he got? How many did he get? Two. Wow. <laughs> I, I And I think that really kind of speaks to a lot of the, the good and bad of this. Yes, it's going to be this awesome limited edition holiday thing, but look at Amiibo. Look at, like, Nintendo pushing scarcity as a way to sell products. Mm -hmm. Where really, if you want this, you should be able to get it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that this is gonna be a super popular product. And I think the reason, you know, a lot, this is a very talked about thing. People have been asking us to do a video on this for a long time. And I think the reason people are so excited is NES collecting is tough to do and it's expensive. You can do it, and it's great. And I, you know, I say, you know, if if you had the time and you had the money, sure, go get yourself a real NES. You're never gonna beat that, you know. But for people that aren't gonna invest the time and the money, or don't have the money to do it, this is a great um, investment. Now we tried it out. We played a bunch of the games on it. It works really well. The games look really nice, and uh, very importantly, the, the controller is really, really functional. You know, I play NES practically every day, so I can tell you. Um, the controller is pretty much the exact same thing as the original nin uh, Nintendo controller, except for, of course, we're gonna have to talk about the cord. The cord is very, very short. Look, we could fit the whole cord in this frame. In the frame, yeah. Right here. The, the That's it. That's the, all you get. The cord is unbelievably short. It's way too short, but there are adapters being made. Uh, like Nyko, for instance, makes one. I think it's nine ninety nine on Am on Amazon. You yeah. can get this. And Nintendo, it, it only comes with one of these controllers, but Nintendo is actually making um, replacement controllers. And then there, there are third-party manufacturers that are even making wireless ones. Okay. Which is really cool. And the, the connector is not the NES connector. It's the like the same Wii connector that you would use on the bottom of the Wiimote. So if you have classic controllers, if you have third-party controllers that plug into the bottom of your Wiimote, you can use them with the NES Classic and not have to buy one of these. So there will be options out there basically to have a longer cord, but... Um just be aware of that before buying this, that the cord is really too short. Yeah, there's the original. Here's the original NES yeah, controller. It's, so it's the same controller, like if we hold them up. It really is. It's, the, like the dimensions are the same. There's six screws in the bottom of this one and that and And everything. also the other thing, the, the feel of it, it feels the same. It feels, it's, it's, yeah. it's really good. This console, just to show you a comparison how small this console is, my phone is literally bigger than the system. So this is a very small console, but it's cool. It looks like the original, you know, Nintendo, and it plugs in with HDMI and all that. The games themselves look really, really nice. The, the games look awesome. I mean, they're super crisp. They work on the TV. One thing to think about is this only outputs in 720p, but it does output in 60 frames per second, which is good. And one other thing I want to say about the tech specs is there's been many um, outlets that have dismantled this thing. And the system on a chip that's in here, it's you know kind of like it's an ARM processor, like something you'd find in a cell phone, and it's actually more powerful than the original Wii. That's crazy to think this little yeah. thing is more powerful than that. And the sad thing about it is that there's no um, there's no expandability. Like if you pull out this board, that they didn't even think about having an SD card slot or having any way. To, to add inputs to it. Everything is soldered onto the motherboard. I would imagine the reason that they didn't do that is they don't want people downloading games and like trying to put them on there because I would imagine at some point Nintendo is going to release another one of these is if this does well. And I think, you know, a lot of people are saying that about the game choice. I think the reason why is, look, listen, Nintendo's a company and they want to make money. Why are not all the good games on here that you might want to have? Because they can release another one later if this thing sells well. It's a plan. But the thing I do have to say about the game choice is it's very strategic. It's very well planned out. The oversights seem to be 
things like games that have licenses that aren't game licenses, like your Batmans or Terminators mm -hmm. or Robocops or the Disney Afternoon. Yeah. I can those kind of I can things. understand in a way, you know, why they wouldn't have Batman and DuckTales and stuff. They gotta pay extra money. Right. But you know, having some of those games, some of those games that are some of the most classic games on the system, it's like how can you really, you know, you can't call this like you know, a system that has all the classics mm -hmm. on it without some of the classics, like DuckTales, yeah. where is that? You know, we actually made a list up. A big one that I thought of, um, with two huge ones, Tetris. How can you have- Yeah, why, why isn't Tetris on here? That's a huge title. It's a it's a system-defining title was, was Tetris. Um, another one, The Adventures of Lolo. That's insane to me that, I, I love, Lolo. love Lolo, such a good game. Awesome. That, talking about a classic, there's an NES classic not on here. I think for the most part, they made good choices within series. They said, okay, if we're gonna do Mega Man, we're only gonna do one Mega Man. It's not like they threw Mega Man 4 in there. They, right. It's Mega Man 2, it's the one you want. It was a good choice, want. if you're gonna pick Mega Man, have Mega Man. But on the other hand, there was one sequel choice that they made that was really, really bad. And it has Super C, but not Contra. Now, Super C is an amazing game, Yeah. but how do you have the sequel and not have the original mm -hmm. game? Now, where I think they did a good job is with Double Dragon yeah. 2. Double Dragon 2, it's two player. I think most people mm -hmm. like Double Dragon 2 more than the first game. Um, I like Double Dragon, but I think they made a good choice there. But yeah, how do you not have Contra, but you have Super Contra? It doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna miss, you know, the only thing I'm gonna miss about them picking Double Dragon 2, and I do think it was the right choice, is if you do Double Dragon 1, you can have the uh, Bobo versus Bobo action in the versus mode. Right. Yeah, but. That is the better choice. Um, some other games on there that we thought should be on there. Uh, Adventure Island. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, as we said, like the um, the Capcom, you know, like Chippendales Rescue Rangers, DuckTales. Uh, where's Blaster Master, Bomberman, uh, Kung Fu. Kung Fu should be on there. Ice Hockey. Ice. I thought Ice Hockey, it's a, it's a so Nintendo no, no reason for it to not game. be on there. There's no licensing, there's no issue. And, and this thing has, going back to the specs, I think it has, the, the chip in here is like 256 gig. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's either 256 meg or 256 gig, the, the memory chip in here. They could have fit multiple copies of the NES library in here. Ice hockey should have been there. Yeah, there, there's no reason that this thing couldn't have more games on it, to be honest. Uh, RC Pro-Am. That would have been awesome. That There's no racing other than Excite Bike, and to me, Excite Bike is more of like a tech demo than a full game, in in my opinion. And how about um, Jackal? Jackal would be awesome, and they have the Konami games. Gradius is on there, or Gradius. I don't know how you how you say it. Um, there's two Castlevanias. It's one of the few games other than Mario, one of the few series other than Mario to have multiple titles, and they have Castlevania One and Castlevania Two. I think that's great. I think if you're limited to 30 games, you don't go to Castlevania 3. Mm -hmm. But it's cool that they have like the run and gun level platformer Castlevania. And then they also have like the sprawling open world one. Right. So, I mean, the selection of games on here is pretty decent. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, but it could have been a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, if they do a sequel to this, our guess is that it's probably not gonna be NES. We're thinking they'll probably make a SNES mini and that would be cool too. I just hope that they make the wires longer. I mean, th this is mm. ridiculous. And, you know, get a bet a little bit better selection of games on there. Yeah, and I think with this hardware platform, they could probably go through N64 without changing much. Yeah. Like literally, they could make a, an N64 mini. That would be cool. That is the same internally. That would be pretty cool. I w I, if they do that, I hope they do the Donkey Kong uh, green, yeah. green version of it. Uh, another cool feature, or having multiple colors, because that system was all about the colors. Yeah. Um, another cool feature is it has the HDMI out. It's non HDCP. We were able to capture everything we needed to capture. But the power is done via micro. I think it's micro USB. And we were able to plug the micro USB directly into the back of a TV with a USB. And the five volt out was enough to power this. Okay. I want to talk about some of the Easter eggs. This isn't just a regular emulator, you pop it open, there's a menu. The menu is really beautiful, it shows you box art. There's there's uh, four save states per game. 
that you can have when, when you when you reset, you hit the reset button to go back to the menu, you can save state games, which is really cool and have more than one save state. Um, it has a burn-in protection mode or a screen saver mode where Mario and Luigi go around the screen and there's a bunch of different ones, which is really cool. I thought it was interesting that they had Star Tropics because to, to play Star Tropics, you need the manual. Yeah. So I was like, how are they gonna deal with that? And also, these games all have awesome manuals, so that's part of the experience. Um, when you go into there, there's a manual tab at the top, and if you click on that, there's a QR code that pops up on the screen that you could scan with your phone and pull the manuals down. That's awesome. Which is cool too. There's also three display modes. There's standard, there's 4.3, and there's CRT emulation. So if you like that CRT with which the- I, Which I do. With the yeah. interlaced and fuzziness and stuff, they have that going on. That's great. For people that are just getting into you know NES and retro games, or maybe you had a Nintendo when you were a kid, but you haven't owned one in 20 or 30 years and, and you want to have this again, this is a great purchase. But if you're looking for more games, and maybe there's some games that you haven't played in a long time, and you want to, you know, you want to play Nintendo, Retro USB just released this, and we this is the pro option right yeah, here. Right. If you, if you don't have any NES games, you've never had an NES. You may, you know maybe you're younger. Then you want to get this. Get this because this is several hundred dollars in value. And it has the HDMI's and it has the USB. If you have a little bit more money to spare, you want to get the AVS. Get the AVS from Retro USB. It has awesome features that you may care about. By the way, I want to point out that we are not sponsored by Nintendo or Retro USB. We're just doing this We're, because yeah. we want to talk about it. So, so why is this one one of the best, if not the best, options? It has a four score built in. It has a Famicom slot here. And flip it around. Is it an NES slot here? Famicom Disk System port here. Awesome that they included that. It has the same ports as this, except it's 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 a mini USB instead of micro. It has the HDMI. But like Ryan said, that's the pro option. This is the starter option. Yeah, and you know, get the extension cables. And they're sold out on Amazon right now, the extension cables. Mm -hmm. This thing is impossible to find. There's no way we would have found it if we didn't have the help from Classic Game Junkie. I'm glad we did. This is gonna be my like go-to option when I'm playing with friends and I don't wanna go into my NES library. So the only other thing I wanna mention about this really is, so with the other games that they didn't include, let's say that this thing's really successful and I think yeah. it probably will be, what do they do when they when people want more? Do they just release another one of these? Because what are you gonna do? Have two of these and stack them on top of each other? Like what do they do? The I guess the big million dollar question is what does that USB port on the back of that do? Right? Okay. Because I, I mean I doubt I think this is it. This is a one-off for Nintendo. If you want to play more games, buy a Switch, buy a Wii U, use the virtual console, right. whatever. But this thing gets updated through this port. Mm -hmm. It's not just power, it's also the update. Right. It would be amazing if we got an update for this. Maybe they released the NES Mini 2.0 or something and it's, just, I don't know. And you can get a USB stick or something and you they'll, can- They'll think of something. Yeah, they need to because this platform is the most exciting platform that Nintendo has until the, the, the until Switch comes switch. out, yeah, right. right? I mean. I think it's great. Don't you think the Nintendo should be selling? Yeah, N Nintendo, you just made this. Sell one with an NES connector on the back of it because this is so much better than all the bootlegs and knockoffs and my controllers are old as shit. Look, my NES controller that I use when we play on Mike From and Ryan <laughs> has a gigantic chunk out of the bottom of it, right? I mean, it still works fine, because the thing- That's the one you chewed on when you're- <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? This is like the one from when I was a kid. I was like, woo! Right, you threw it against the Boom, wall when you are frustrated it. with yeah. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Exactly, so- um, Hey, there's another option for you. You can do one of these and maybe color it a different color or something and come out with all the crappy games. Like, let's yeah. have Jekyll and Hyde and let's have Fester's Quest and- and all and yeah, all, all those terrible awful things. It's gonna be games. win, lose, or draw. And and hey, I know somebody that can promote it. Yeah, we would love to. Wink, wink. <laughs>